right, welcome back to another episode of uh, Season 2 at the Art of Football 365. So uh, go ahead and gronk spike the subscribe button for us and hit that like button as many times as Patty Mahomes is throwing a touchdown this season, which is quite a bit. And uh, go ahead and leave us a comment, just like Troy Aikman does every single time. Joe Buck makes zero sense. All right, so this uh, this episode, we're uh, blessed enough to be joined by uh, Luke Norman. Uh, this is going to be a great one, uh, hearing about his story and soaking up all of his fresh coaching experience he has. Uh, Luke Norman is uh, the Highland Community College uh, men's basketball coach in his first year, uh, follow, follow, following in his father's footsteps at a historic uh, Division One JUCO powerhouse. Uh, so before we get into this, I just kind of want to mention that obviously, yes, he's a basketball coach and this uh, podcast is called The Art of Football, but uh, all alleys of coaching are related. People can definitely gain experience from whatever sport they coach in, and that's what we're trying to do here is soak up as much information as we can with uh, any coach that we could possibly talk to. So I'm going to let yep. Gannon kind of start this off. So, yeah, Luke, we just kind of want you to introduce yourself right here. What's, you know, who's Luke as a person and as a coach, and tell something about yourself that the audience may not know. Yeah, first of all, appreciate you guys having me on here. Um, like Bryce mentioned, um, Luke Norman, I'm the head coach, first year head coach at um, Highland Community College, um, a place where I love and kind of grew up in, um, you know, as the type of coach I am, you know, I'm still learning as I go as a coach, um, but I like to think of myself as uh, a player's coach to the fullest, you know, our first year building the culture at Highland, we're all about family. So our guys, um, our coaching staff, we're very close to each other. Um, which allows us as coaches to be able to get in our guys pretty hard and earn their respect. Um, in terms of me as a person, man, I'm I'm pretty chill. If I'm not if I'm not coaching, man, I like to hang out. Um, I watch a lot of basketball games, a lot of football games, pretty much any sports, man. I'm even watching soccer now. So I'm a sports junkie. Um, free time, I chill with friends, man. Go out when I can. Not during this COVID season, but pretty normal guy all through and through. Just a just a basketball coach. Oh, for sure, and. Uh, like you said, sports junkie. That's that's kind of what Gannon and I are like, and that's why we do this podcast, just because we love to talk sports 24-7. And uh, it's impacting our lives just like yours, I'm sure. But I kind of want to ask you now, like, so uh, what about sports made you want to get into the coaching world? And has it always been a thought in the back of your mind? So if it has, kind of describe that process. Yeah, it, it's always been a thought in the back of my mind. Um, when I finished playing in Eastern Illinois, um, I became a grad assistant for their basketball program there. Um, you know, after I did that, I actually took a year off from coaching, you know, to try something new, see if I would like it. And after that first year, I, I stopped. I quit my job. I knew I had to get back into coaching. I was still working in sports, selling sports sponsorships. But, you know, that's for me, working in sports, truly working in sports, you're either a player, coach, or trainer. You, know, you don't get that same – same level of intensity watching from the sideline, not involved. You know, I like I like the competitiveness of sports, man. It's a zero-sum game. You either win or you lose. So I knew in the back of my head I always wanted to be a coach from a young age. I just wanted to give myself the opportunity to try something else to make sure mm -hmm. I wasn't missing out on something in life. Oh, and as soon sure. as I tried that and I didn't enjoy it, I knew I had to get back into coaching because I miss I miss competing. I miss the the happiness of wins and even like the devastating feeling of losses and mm -hmm. growing. So yeah, there's, yeah, there's nothing like that atmosphere in sports that, that it can bring to you. No, there's nothing like it, man. Like I said, it's a zero-sum game, man. You're either happy after the end of a game or you're, or you're sad or mad. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's You can't beat that feeling unless you're coaching or really playing in it. Yeah. Sure. I mean, obviously with COVID, it's affected a lot. You guys have just kicked off your season the last couple of weeks. And congrats on your first win against Wabash Valley a week ago Thursday and then pick up another win against Clark. But – Obviously, with the schedule being condensed this year, you know, a so-called COVID season, what has that been like? You know, I know some of your players dealt with COVID. I'm not sure what some of your coaches have over the fall, but how's that been kind of juggling your first year with also trying to get the schedule? I know you've been trying to reach out to people to get games on Twitter. It's just kind of a mess. Kind of talking on that for a little bit. Yeah, I'll tell you, man, if I can survive this first year as a head coach during the <laughs> COVID season, I can pretty much get through anything, I feel like. <laughs> no, it's been, you know, usually in the fall, when we're doing workouts and practicing, the guys have a game to look forward to in November. This year, there was none of that. So all throughout the fall, we were doing individuals, we were lifting, and then we got 60, 60 practices during the fall. And it's, it's hard to keep guys engaged and go hard every practice. You know, me being a player, I understand that. 
Because when you're practicing every day, going against the same guys every single day, you guys know how practice is, man. You're doing a lot of the little things over and over and over again. <clears throat> but in the regular season, you know, they're looking forward to a game in a couple months or a month when we start practice. We didn't have that. You know, mm-hmm. we came in, we practiced all fall. We came back, we had to practice for another two weeks before our first game. And now that it's rolling, man, you know, we can actually learn more about ourselves. It's really hard to learn about your team when you're going to get each other every day. Um, from a coach's perspective, in practice, you know, when our offense looks good, we think our defense looks like crap. When our defense looks like crap, we think our offense is good. And you can really never get a true feel for your team until you actually play against somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know, our first two games, we played against two very, very good teams with Wabash Valley. And, you know, we had a tough loss at, at Ben Sims, who's ranked sixth in the country, um, got back on track against Clark. Um, but it's it's been a grind, man. Our players have actually done a great job. You know, we had a team GPA of 3.28 in the fall, which I was very proud of. The guys got it done in the classroom. And now, you know, there's a lot of games in a condensed schedule. So, you no, know, it's it's been it's been fun probably finally trying to play against other teams. Oh, for sure. And kind of like the next question we have is kind of related to COVID in all honesty. And uh, I know it's it's definitely been an impactful and, and stressful season, I'm sure, especially for your first year. Like I, I can imagine that's pretty <laughs> tough. But uh, with COVID and everything going on, uh, kind of describe the recruiting process for us, for our younger and older viewers, <laughs> uh, just so they can get a better understanding of how it works and on how to handle it as a coach. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's difficult for the coaches too. You know, I know I feel terrible for a lot of the seniors right now mm-hmm. in high school because yeah. um, I don't know if every, all your viewers know this, but everybody in basketball right now, I don't know about football or baseball, everybody in basketball, they get a free year of eligibility. So the scholarships, they're at the division one level, especially are not there for a lot of guys mm-hmm. in high school right now, unless you're like a high major or legit mid-major player, it's going to be hard for guys to get scholarships. Um, my advice to players, man, if, if you have a scholarship and you like the coaching staff, don't wait to go somewhere bigger or wait for a, for a better offer. If you have something right now, you're, you're pretty lucky. So I would say jump on it if you think, if you like the coaching staff and it's the right fit. Coaching wise, man, it's you know, no high school basketball in Illinois. I like recruiting in person. I like going mm-hmm. to see guys in person, uh, tell a lot more about their character, I think, in person. But, you know, we're watching, watching a lot of games online, um, just reaching out to different coaches and kids. But right now it's, it's tough for everybody. But I just want to reiterate, man, high school kids, don't, don't get down. Um, it's going like that for everybody. A lot of scholarships sure. are available right now. But just keep grinding, you know. Don't get, I always tell people to don't get caught up in levels. Like Division one, yeah. Division two, mm-hmm. Division three. Don't get cut Great off. Thing. There's a lot of D two, high major D twos that you know are just as good as D ones with better resources. Um, there's D threes that are as good as D twos. Don't get caught up in a level. Go somewhere where one you're wanted, and two you're gonna have playing time. Don't mm-hmm. don't go out for or wait for a D one team because you want to say you play D one because mm-hmm. you'll probably get there and not play and be miserable. I mean D one. I mean it's it's a dog eats dog world. So you're not just going there and gonna play right away as a freshman. But if you have something that you like right now, take it because for basketball-wise scholarships, they're not as available as they usually are. Yeah. Um, our next thing here, you know, Twitter has been such a huge thing in the coaching world and all sports right now. And I see you interact a lot with the Highland account and also your own personal account. You know, kind of how do you um, develop your coaching relationships with other people? And is it only strictly going there other college basketball coaches or is it high school levels and other sports? Yeah, so Twitter, I mean, as you know, Twitter's huge right now in the recruiting world. You know, I'll send a DM to a kid who I see some film on, get a response, and, and go from there. Um, in terms of kind of other coaches, I, I learned from all coaches, essentially. Um, X's and O's, it's, it's basketball. But from the mental aspect of things, you know, I'll, I'll look at football, baseball. I look at a lot of football, you know, like Coach Saban, um, all the elite coaches, what they do to get their guys prepared mentally, and, and the little details that they go through um, to get their guys ready to get on the field. So I think taking little chunks from top coaches everywhere, um, and you can see a lot of it on Twitter, or you can just go on YouTube. But I try to be a sponge, you know, especially the mental aspect of the game. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, X's and O's, those will come. But, you know, the mental part of the game is more important to me than X's and O's, you know. Personally at Highland, you know, we don't run a bunch of confusing stuff. But we want our guys to be mentally prepared to go out there and play hard all the time and to be able to know, do the little things at an elite level. If you do little things at an elite level, usually your team will have an opportunity to, to be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I agree with everything you just said. And, like, 
Like, I think it's important. You kind of touched on a little bit. I think it's important to, to branch off to different sports. Like obviously your sport has its own individual X's and O's, but at the end of the day, like, like learning from other coaches, like you mentioned, Nick Saban, uh, there's little things behind that, like uh, different techniques you can utilize and uh, building a team is like building a business. You start from the ground up and that's how, that's mm -hmm. how you become successful. So it's important to branch out and uh, learn everything and soak up as much information as possible. Uh, but now I kind of want to ask you uh, specifically basketball, like what about basketball has always stuck out to you from the jump? And like, uh, when did you begin playing basketball and give a little background into your playing career before your coaching career began? Man. So man, I've, <laughs> I've been in a gym since I was a little kid. I mean, my dad, you know, I was born in Springfield, Missouri. I don't know if a lot of people know that. My dad was coaching down there, and um, he took the job here at Highland. And ever since I can remember, I've been in the gym watching practices, trying to get shots up. And I think the thing about basketball is, I you know, it's just five guys working together all at once. You know, it's like a little poetry in motion. When you run offense, guys cutting to the right spot. Sorry, my dog's going a little crazy over here. I don't know if you can or not. <laughs> Oh, but, yeah, it's like poetry in motion, man, you know, especially defensively. You got to always kind of know where your defensive help side is. So they, you know, know your guys have your back so you can ball pressure a little more because you know helps back there. And I think it's just the, the pace of basketball, too. You know, up and down a lot. There's not a lot of stoppage time. Um, you know, kind of football after every play, you get a little break, you know, 20 seconds, which, you know, different sport, you're getting hit every time. So a little different baseball, lower, slower pace. But, you know, I like you know, basketball. It's kind of fast paced the entire time. You know, you're out there playing for about five or six minutes at a time at a, at a fast pace, you know, conditioning part of it. And like I said, man, just the five on five, you know, you literally have to work as a team every time. You know, as you know, in football, man, if all 11 guys aren't on the same page out there, you're going to have a tough time. Exactly. On basketball, you need all five guys out there to be on the same page, nowhere to be at on offense, nowhere to be at on help side on defense. And I think that really just kind of, I mean, I just kind of levitated to it because I was grown into it. And I was in a gym from a very young age and watched guys at a high level from a very young age and kind of just fell in love with the sport. Yeah, sure. I mean, I kind of want to take a little trip down memory lane. I remember back when – what year did you graduate again? Was it 2010? 2012, man. Come on. 2012, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that <laughs> old yet. <laughs> but I remember me and my buddies because that's when I was 10, 12, 11 years old, and that's when I was still playing basketball. And that was probably the last time Freeport basketball was rocking – Mm -hmm. selling out the arena and you guys throw out the little orange squishy balls yeah. everybody with Marcus Van Brocklin, Devin Best, I mean Max Hafery. You guys had a hell of a squad and that was fun because that was just kind of the, the start of your basketball career and I got a, a long question here. I'm going to split it up into two. I'm going to ask you the first half and you know you started out at um, Southwest Illinois College which a lot of people didn't know and then you came back to Highland and you had a little injury there and then um, going to Eastern Illinois kind of just talk a little bit quick and all of those kind of those relationships and um how did that help you get into it the being the highland coach? Well, yeah man I've, I've had a long journey you know from from high school went to swick right away um it was weird man it was it was a shell shock for me i can't lie you know i think my senior year our baseball team we went to made the sectional championship yep. and we lost on a saturday and that sunday during the summer i took off to go down there in the summer so right it was a turnaround just like that you know so literally the first month down there i was i was homesick i was miserable I didn't have a chance to say bye to any of my friends, none of that. But, you know, just, just grind it out. And when I was there, um, I actually had back surgery. I had a bad problem with my back. So freshman year, had back surgery and kind of knew I wanted to transfer transfer back to Highland. The original reason I went there is I, I just wanted to get away. You know, Highland's an elite JUCO program. Um, Could have went there, but kind of wanted to get away and challenge myself and get uncomfortable a little bit. I didn't want to stay comfortable in Freeport and, Kind of do the same things over and over again. So I went down there, and that really that really toughened me up, um, especially mentally. Being down there by myself, I was six hours away. Um, had a had a pretty intense coach who pushed us every day, and it was a grind, man. And like I said, I had back surgery, uh, missed the last probably five ten games of the season. Um, came to Highland, then we had a great team here at Highland. We made Hutch. Um, we had a lot of very good players on our team. We lost to the. Uh, the national champions at Hutch first yep. game um, had them on the ropes, but tore my ACL at Highland then. So I went from back surgery to tearing my ACL at Highland. Didn't get national out of that. And fortunately enough, um, Eastern coach Spoon, I was recruiting me to Swick a little bit. Um, so he still took a chance on me. So when I went down to Eastern Illinois and, you know, had a blast down there. I'm forever indebted to coach Spoon and, and that coaching staff. And I made brothers for life down there, man. My best friends are, 
still the teammates at Eastern Illinois to this day. Even my JUCO teammates, man. JUCO, that JUCO life is different. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a grind, man. Like, when you're in it, you want to be at that D1 level. And then when you're gone, you know, you really miss that JUCO bond. Those bonds are different than any other any other place you can get because it's all guys who are hungry to get to that next level. But Eastern Illinois, yeah. Went there, and then shoot, man, my junior year there, I, I tore my meniscus, so I missed the last part of that season. And then my senior year, I was fortunate enough to be healthy, and, you know, be a real, little role player, which which I, I took that um, very seriously. You know, people, guys got to play their roles, and I felt like I played mine very well. And I think all those experiences, man, it, it got me ready to, you know, get into the coaching world. And I took little little pieces from each coach that, that I played for and, you know, take a lot of things from my dad still from watching him be successful at Highland. And when the Highland job opened up, well, I actually applied for the Freeport job. Um, unfortunately, didn't get that, but I'm glad they got somebody like TJ, who I think can do a pretty good job there. Um, and then the Highland job opened up and, you know, I knew I wanted to jump on that. I knew I had enough recruiting ties. Um, I'm a younger head coach, but you know, I feel like I've been through a lot. Um, like I said, the recruiting ties are there and um, I just feel like it was the right place to be. I've always kind of wanted to come back and coach at Highland. And so when the opportunity um, arrived, I, I just jumped on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then kind of take a little step back there, going back to your high school days with your AAU team. I know that you played on the Rockford primetime and then ended up making a switch with mm -hmm. to the Illinois Warriors. And I know Fred had a Fred Van Fleet, the 815 standout had a little bit of a uh, key role in that and kind of just talk about that. And if you did have any um, experiences with Fred, just kind of talk mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. So I ended up playing with them my junior season um, it was a great experience. Honestly, you know, Fred, he was a great guy, just a winner. You know, Marcus Posley was on that team too with us. So, you know, we had a, we had a pretty good team. Um, it was nothing about prime time that I didn't like why I left, but Fred Van Fleet was the point guard, you know, and I'm a point guard <laughs> and I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to outshine him a point guard or, or take his spot, man. He's, he's a special player. So, you know, I thought the right thing to do was kind of go to a different team, another really good AU team, you know, John Shire played for them. Um, trying to think who else was one other pretty big name who played for him. I can't think of it right now, but um, I think it was the right decision because I got to play point guard and showcase my skills that way. I knew that playing off guard, you know, with Fred, I wasn't going to get recruited that way. I wasn't yeah. elite, fast enough, tall enough, athletic enough. So I just, you know, decided to leave and join the Warriors and it paid off for me. But in terms of Fred, man, he's, he's awesome to play with. He's an awesome dude. Um, he's pretty quiet, man. He's, he's not like a, loud or anything like that he just goes out there and hoops and wins man so um and I knew I knew I wasn't as good as him so I had to realize that and, and kind of go somewhere else where I could showcase my skills at at the point guard position sure. instead of playing off ball. oh yeah no that's that's awesome that you had that experience to be able to play with a guy like that and uh see his success now and kind of help it shape shape your coaching career too like after you've seen a guy who's in the NBA play which is kind of kind of special uh, but yeah, it's, it's incredible. His story, man. I mean, <laughs> betting on himself to chose the Raptors, wins a championship, gets an 80 mil contract. It's, mm -hmm. it's awesome. It's what he, he does maximize that bet on yourself. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He, uh, he just maximized the phrase bet on yourself. I mean, it's, yeah, it's three he words does. and he just maximized it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he gets back to Rockford, man. He's, he's still in the Rockford community to this day. He raps, reps Rockford to this day. So he's, he's proud of where he's from. You know, there's a lot of guys from I think our area to 815 who go off somewhere and they'll, they'll say they're from, they're from Chicago when they're really not yep. you know, they're from Rockford or Freeport or suburbs. He is all in on Rockford, which mm -hmm. I love about that. You know, he's not going to say he's from Chicago. He's from Rockford. So. Sure. Well, back to, back to kind of your coaching career. Uh, like uh, what is your advice? What would you say? Like uh, advice, like what advice would you give to me as, as an aspiring coach? Like what, what, what initial advice would you give to somebody who's, who's aspiring to be a coach at, at the beginning and early stages of their career? <clears throat> One, I would say it's important. You got to be yourself. You know, you can take um, information from other coaches and kind of how they do things. But at the end of the day, you can't be the other coach. You got to be yourself. And if you try starting to be a different coach instead of being who you really are, I think you'll get lost in kind of in everything coaching wise. So number one, be yourself. I think number two, it's all about relationships. You know, you got to have relationships with your players, got to have relationships with their families, got to have relationships with the community. You know, I always say this all the time, you know, if you want the community that you're coaching in to support you, you better have your team going to support the community as well. 
It just can't be a one-way street where you want the community to support you, but you're not getting your team into the community and giving back. So one thing we did this year that was cool is um, we actually helped hand out a lot of Thanksgiving meals with the United We Stand. Um, our guys stood out in the cold weather, um, just handed out meals to families in need, which, which I thought was great. And that all that stuff will come back to help us in the future. People will remember that kind of stuff. It's a little but thing. Relationships, man. If you have relationships with your players, they'll do anything for you. You know, you can coach them harder. You can get on them because they know it's out of a place of love. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't have that relationship with them, if you're only in their life when you guys are practicing, they're not going to care about you as much. And things will go in and out in one ear and out the other. Mm -hmm. So I think just being yourself and, and building strong relationships, that's the best advice. Yeah, it. it's, 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 I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's bigger than basketball. Life's more important than sports, and that, that's going to take your guys farther in life. So, you know, you talked about earlier, you're still keeping contact with some of your former teammates. I know that 2014 team, when we went to Hunch with DeMarco Henry and Marvin Jones, oh, yeah. and James Boone, I mean, they had a crew, and I still keep in contact with Marvin. I know you do too. I see the comments on social media. Marvin's a stand up guy who's still playing overseas. You know, how do some of those relationships there? at Swick and I know your uh, assistant coach at Highland was also was he your teammate then at Eastern correct yeah he was my teammate at Eastern yep so um how do some of those connections you know those guys been giving you feedback support on your new journey just kind of talk about those connections how those have helped you yeah man it is all giving me tons of support you know Marvin funny story about Marvin me and him were at Swick together yep you know and I kind of brought him here with me man so he came <laughs> here and flourished and man he's having a heck of a pro a pro career overseas right now and now, me and him will text every now and then, you know, just offering support to me and to uh, asking for some players in the Thornton, uh, Chicago area, man. So that's yeah. always important. Um, but, yeah, Joe, me and him played at Eastern together. Um, he was actually a, a grad assistant at UCF the past two years before he came here. And he had texted me one time and asked if I was still coaching. And I had just gotten the job. And, you know, just like, you can come here and coach with me, man. He actually, we live together. So we're around each other all the time, um, always talking ball. And I think it's important to get – people on your staff who are loyal to you, you know, who are your friends before just your colleagues. Because, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, it's bigger than basketball. Your, your assistant coaches, they're part of the family too. And Joe's fed in perfectly here. He's been great in the community. Um, and all the players, man, they, they show tons of support. Um, even my guys at Eastern, they'll, they'll be on a live stream watching, texting me after the game. So it's just those relationships, man. And you can't get those. I feel like you can have, you know, good friends outside of sports, but – when you're in a sports team, man, th those friendships are a lot different, I feel like, because you guys go through the trials and tribulations together. Tears, smiles, early mornings, late nights, wins, losses. That relationship is just stronger, I feel like, than just, you know, the regular friendship. I agree 100%. And I feel like being a coach, is, is it's special to be able to – you're kind of like a growth leader, same as a teacher. I know that's mm -hmm. that's my major. I'm getting in to be a teacher. And, and the whole uh, teaching, coaching thing is you're uh, – you're a growth leader. You're trying to help people uh, promote their physical and mental health. So that's what I love about coaching. And I kind of want to have you ask, uh, I want to ask you a little bit about like your own individual definition of what a coach is and what they should be doing on an individual basis to make a successful team. I think it's, I think you hit it perfectly. It's, you're a teacher. I mean, you're teaching them not even just about basketball, but you're teaching them life lessons when you're coaching them, you know, on the field or on the court. And I think it's a mentorship. You know, you're mentoring young, uh, some boys into men, you know, especially at the JUCO yeah. level. We got 18 and 19 year olds every single season. You know, some, most of the time, JUCO guys, they don't come from the best background or they maybe have messed up in life beforehand and they're just looking for a second opportunity. So I think mentoring them, making them a better person, I think showing them that you care about them off the court. I think a lot of coaches go wrong when, you know, they just care about what they do to produce on the court. If you can just sit down with them and just talk about them, you know, we'll bring guys in. I'll bring guys into the office and we'll just talk. Not even we don't say a word about basketball. You know, we'll just talk about how they're doing the classes, how's their life, how their family is doing. So I think those are the two main things. When you're a teacher, but you're also a mentor to these kids. They're looking up to you. They see how you act. They see what you're doing off the floor. You know, they're seeing what you're doing in the community, and they'll they'll take that with them for life, man. You know, one of the big ones I think my dad had a huge impact on guys doing that. You know, he's, his guys talk to him to this day, like all of them. They just reach out to him. A lot of them are just one life because he cares about him more than just a basketball player. You know, we're coaching them to, bas to be better basketball players, but also to be better people in the end. For sure. So I think you're, you're a teacher and a mentor. Coach is 
I don't know who made out the word coach, but. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the, the real coaching job starts when the practice and the games end or yeah. before the practice and game start. And that's it's a 24 seven job. And you're saying all the right things and I know you're going to keep doing it the right way. But, you know, just kind of wrap it up. The last question here, you know, do you have any advice for us with this podcast and what can we do to make it better? And if you got any ideas, you know, share them with us. No, man, I, I think you guys are doing great, man. Something people doing something good for Freeport in the 815 area, um, bringing guys stories on who can maybe inspire other kids. Um, I think it's great. I will continue to, you know, get a lot of different sports in as many sports as you can and maybe bring some players on, you know, so they can get like get with major, you mm -hmm. know, more players where you can give, get their advice on things um, and see how that kind of how that experience at, at that next level goes. Um, but no, man, I'm, I'm very proud of both you guys, man. You guys are doing great things, um, shedding positivity in a world right now that that seems like it's full of negativity. It's yeah. something people are always arguing, man. So. Just keep doing what you're doing, really, man. Keep on bringing great guests. You guys ask great questions, man. And I think you guys have really improved on kind of the production of it, too. So I said, yeah, just keep yeah. doing yourself, guys. Yeah. Like I said, yeah, be, I mean, be yourself. Be, don't try to be other podcasts. Just be your guys' self, and it'll be successful. Yeah. I mean, we can't thank you enough because, I mean, you kind of – Shed some good insight also as a person and as a coach on this. And that's kind of what we want. We want this happy medium that it's sports, but there's also more to sports. And I mean, there's more to life than just sports. And, you know, I'm excited to see you grow. It's, I mean, I've been ingrained with the Highland program in a while and good friends with Pete, with your dad and stuff. And I know you're going to build it up in the next couple of years. And one last thing I want to say, we'll watch the couple live feeds of your home games, man. When you pace the sidelines, it's like, holy crap, there's Pete and just, uh, <laughs> in a younger oh. form. And, you know, I don't want to say too much, but I saw the little kick chair at the end of the half against oh, the match. But, you know, I, you know, I had to throw that in there. But, <laughs> hey, it happens. Emotions run high. But, you know, someone, best of luck. Best of luck to you, man, this year. And always fire up Cougar fans. Yes, someone actually texted me. They are like, you know, it looked like you wanted to really kick it, and then you just tapped it over. So <laughs> yeah. I caught myself My in the middle of it, man. I was I was pretty angry at that time. We just, we just weren't playing hard enough. And my oh, dad God, texted me. God. He was like, "That was Pete. That was Pete. That was Pete. <laughs> Ten, fifteen years ago." <laughs> Thank God they got together in the second half, man. When, as yeah. a coach, man, one more advice: players win, coaches lose. Coaches yeah. keep that in mind, especially if you're a young coach. Wins, it's, it's the players, man. Coaches take loss for the credit. Too many. I feel like a lot of coaches they they want to take credit um, for wins, then blame players when it's losses, and, and it's the opposite. If we didn't win, man, it's something that coaches did to not prepare the players. So, Oh, yeah, for sure. And I, I appreciate all the advice and being able to hear about your story. And we uh, greatly appreciate you joining us on this week's episode. Uh, I feel like we learned a lot about you as a coach, but more importantly, importantly as a person. Uh, so I just wanted to take the time to say uh, good luck in this upcoming season and uh, the rest of your season this year and, and beyond, too. So uh, this is coming from a Highland Community College alum. So. Yes, I wish sir, you the baby. best, and I, I appreciate you uh, coming on here and taking the time out of your day for us. No, I appreciate you guys having me, man. Keep keep doing your guys' things, all right? For sure. Yep, we'll catch you guys next week. And until then, keep viewing, subscribing, and liking our videos. And until then, leave a comment. Bryce and I can improve anything. We'll take any of the feedback you guys given us. We've implemented some stuff that we got from some of our friends, and obviously our videos and everything are looking cleaner and cleaner week by week. So we just want to thank you guys, and thanks again, Luke. Yeah, no problem, guys. Have a good one.